Peter has chosen our topic. He has chosen the strategic plan of switching the attack. Now, by definition, switching the attack means you add one plan and you change your plan <laughs> to do something else. And I always used to think this was a sign of a poor plan to begin with because in all the books I'd ever read, it was, oh, this is a good example of this plan and look how they, they did this and they followed it through brilliantly. You know, um, and the one plan worked for the home, whole game. And it was only as I got older I realised it's actually pretty, pretty rare that you start with one plan you know, and you follow it through to its conclusion. I'd say it's incredibly rare. Normally, your opponent has a say in the matter, and they mess it up, either by giving you a glorious opportunity, like have a queen, yeah, and you change your plan, you go, yeah, I'll take the queen, you know, you go, I was going to go checkmate you, or it's breakthrough on the queen side, you know, they usually do something, and you change, end up changing your plan, for hopefully a better plan. It's when you change your plan, and it turns out, you know, and you change it back again, and you go back again, and you end up getting nowhere. So, You've seen my game. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I've played a few of that. Um, so this is, is going to be about switching the attack. Now, the other thing I think it's worth in the introduction saying, yeah, is that for many years, I never understood what value having a space advantage was. Yeah? I've got a bit more space than you have, mm. and I go, yeah, I can see that, I've got a lot full range to you, but so what? How does that convert me into winning the game or anything? Yeah? Now, in most plans, it doesn't help the blind but in switching the attack, it means you have superior mobility, you've got more space to move in. Yeah? And in the, the plan of switching the attack, then having more space is a definite, definite help. Because your opponent's a bit blocked in. He can't manoeuvre his pieces from one side to the other, either to defend against what you're doing, yeah? Because they don't, it, it's going to be all more, it's going to be blocked in. So, in terms of having more space, yeah, so what? But in, if the plan is attack on one side, and if that's not working, and he's a bit tired, suddenly switch to the other, more space can really help you because you can move particularly rooks and queens and up from one side to the other a little bit. Even bishops you can reposition quite quickly. Knights a little bit slower. You know, if you're attacking on one side and want to get to the other, you've got quite a few moves. Now also the idea about switching the attack often occurs when the centre's blocked. Okay? Because if you want to change one thing to another it's going to take three or four following moves to move over. You don't want them blowing up the centre. You, know, you won't have time to do it. So there's some prerequisites with this is you want a fairly blocked and solid centre. Okay? Because you know, if you haven't got a plan, you're just waiting, waiting to break out in the middle. Because if somebody comes up the side, premature flank attack should be punished by a good player in the centre. You know, if it goes, anyone goes up the wing, you're looking to break through the centre. So, if you are looking to switch the attack, for, say, from one side to the other, you're looking for it to be pretty stable in the middle as well. So, this is not a plan that's going to work for every game, okay? Far from it. It's just going to, it's going to be appropriate sometimes, maybe not others. Right, um, yeah, I mentioned about sticking with the same plan. Uh, I call sticking with the same plan can, can, be, can be a good idea if it started, but very often. I get so distracted by my opponents doing something that present me with a better plan. Yeah, that I, I, in fact, in fact, it's a good tactic. Yeah, if if somebody's got a real good plan of coming and attacking your king, maybe your plan should be try and get my queen trapped on the other side of the board, all man, but not quite. And then they'll take them go. I've got, I've got, I've got his queen over here. And then if you managed to wriggle out, at least they didn't come checkmate. So, yeah, you're, you're spoiling people's attack, uh, plans is, uh, is, is quite good. Right, so a game I have chosen dates from the uh, oh, best part of 60 years ago. And it's a game, be, um, it's a game between somebody called Samuel Ryshevsky as white and uh, uh, 
Kligerich, is it F? I can't think of his first name. Svetazar. Svetazar Kligerich, <coughs> or something similar to that. Yeah. And um, this is played at a, a match in New York. In fact, Ryshevsky was a junior genius. When he was about seven or eight, even younger than you, he was like playing 50, 60 people simultaneously. Yeah, very impressive. And, and sometimes he'd take on 30 people blindfolded as well, just, <laughs> just for laugh. So, yeah, he was a real child prodigy. But you get that in music or maths or chess. You can get child prodigies. We're just normal here, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> right, let's see how this game started. And uh, it started with a D4 opening. And he went D4. And black plays the sort of starts, starts playing on the king's side with his knight and plays here. And he's heading for a King's Indian defence. Okay. Very popular. You, you meet it at a club level, loads and loads and loads. And the first few moves then must have bought played this loads of times before. And you've got a typical position where White's um, White's behind him development now. <laughs> Two pieces out and one, but he's decided he's going to go for the centre. So he's he's definitely got the centre here. And uh, D3. Uh, D6, sorry. And now White has lots of ways of playing this, you know, this position. Um, I mean, he can, he can do this, followed by women's life, which should be a queen here, playing the same ish. He, if he really wants to be go for it, he can play the full pawn attack. It's a bit hairy for both sides. Yeah, I mean, here, what an impressive pawn centre, but I <laughs> have the castles. <laughs> yeah. Black's got his king development, a couple of pieces out, and if only he can break these up a little there, White could be in a lot of trouble. But no, White plays very sensibly, nothing wrong with this. He plays here, and Black castles, okay. and um, White the bishop here. And Black plays here, and this is just, uh, he can now go taking, you know, and sorting queens and rooks. And, Try and take his pawn and then find the rook comes back, he loses this one back. And not, the, not, the consideration is that black's probably equalised if he does that. You know, white, white doesn't get much of, enough of an advantage. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure they all knew that. But now we've got a position where what on earth do you do? Okay? And you've got a choice. I mean, you can do this and block it all up if that's what you want to do. Yeah, that's certainly a, a possibility. Um, White keeps the tension in the middle going a little bit by doing a sensible move like castles. Okay. Um, then uh, black plays here, you know, just to try and hold this pawn again. And I think you can see already the settling down to White's all got four and black's going to defend three. And see, see what happens. All very, very, uh, uh, very simple. And white goes here. This is quite a slow way of doing it, but perfectly playable. Nothing wrong with it at all. And black decides to go here. Um, means nothing horrible can drop in on this square. Um, and if he takes, he can take with the pawn or the knight. I'd probably take with the pawn, so I'm trying to use this square for a knight in a minute. And uh, I think chances are roughly about equal here. But a little bit of space for white. Yeah. That's to say, I never understood what good space was anyway. You know, when it came to checkmating your opponent and hacking him off the king, so I've got an extra couple of squares, didn't make any difference to me. But it will, as we see later on, make a bit of a difference. And uh, <laughs> white is playing very slowly here. <laughs> yeah, removing the bishop out of uh, the line of sight here so the, the rook can can try and control the centre a little bit better. And Black brings his rook here. He's just, he's just making the strength of, of this particular point here. Um, in, a, in a lot of these positions, in this King Sinian position, you find that Black really struggles to get his the white square bishop out. It's, in many of the Sicilians, it's much the same. Yeah? If you find you get this out here, it only has to get swapped off and you Give white two bishops much. Might be nice to play in an end game. Yeah. But you know, if you don't know where it's going, 
Yeah? Maybe that maybe it's not its best square until a better one appears. Yeah? But the problem is, of course, we, if that doesn't move, then the roots don't sort of work together as well. So, but you're black, yeah? and you play quite a passive but solid defence. So I, I'd say this is roughly right. Black now might want to do something like here and make use of this this file somehow. Maybe put a bit more pressure on there, stick the knight here. Maybe you can bring the bishop out and put some pressure on there. So Black's maybe thinking about um, trying to wriggle out of this position. Um, the one, one thing I would say is, if you are in a cramped position like this, okay, it's amazing how useful it is to just swap off one pair of minor pieces. Not knight, bishop, just one thing. Okay? And in, in many positions, yeah, okay, I'm not cramped, White's not cramped at all here. Yeah? He can put his piece over. But Black might put the traffic jams. And very often, yeah, very often you can do moves like this, so Bishop in just swap the thing off. And it's amazing how, how useful it is to only have three major minor pieces rather than four. I um, you know, I've seen a few games and played them myself, but you know, you deliberately don't let them swap one off. It's amazing what a traffic jam that you can get themselves into without really trying. Yeah? So, you know, if you're black, swapping on one pair of minor pieces is probably got a strategic idea just to, just to keep it you know, easy to play. Right, okay. Now, white makes a big strategic decision here. Yeah? It's amazing, really, how, you know, uh, that it's... <laughs> I always think that when somebody moves a pawn over halfway, why play here? As soon as he moves a pawn over, why he's made a big decision. If Blank moves a pawn over halfway, he's probably made a big decision. And the big decision here is to try and block it up. Yeah? To block up the centre. Uh, which changes the nature of the position very, very, very quickly. Yeah? Because, you know, I mean, Black, Black could go the whole hog and say, whoa, come on. Let's block everything up. And now, you, you, know, you know everyone says, control the centre. Well, actually, control the centre is, is, is not what the golden rule is. It's control the key squares, which is nine times out of ten the centre. But now, these are the key squares around here, and these around here. Yeah? So black has got to try and play for this move, and just come squeezing around. You can't go through the centre. Yeah? That's like... Camley on Saturday afternoon, the 8.30 is completely blocked, right from the meadows right away. So it's completely blocked, there's no point in getting through there. You've got to come around the edge. You either got to go around, um, you know, back around that way or play this move and go back through Domain Road or wherever it is. So you've got to, you've got to do that. So, and what White's plan might be to break with this or this. Okay? But you've got to get around the edge. And who's going to do what? Well, it would be very ambitious for White to break here and to break here. Okay? On the ground, so he'd have to split his forces to do it. And if Black just concentrated on one and put all the forces there, he's going to outnumber it. Yeah? So you don't want to fight a war on two fronts. Okay? It hasn't worked in the past. Very, very well. So you don't want to. So you're going to have to choose to do one or the other. And in many of these positions, you find out that that white can often plays at the queen side, and black often plays down the king side. And if you manage to break through, it's checkmate. Okay, that's black's plan. But I have to see in this position, he's put everything on the wrong squares now. Okay, this is back here. He's put everything completely on the wrong squares. Because he, to be able to play this move, he needs the rook behind it. He needs to get this knight out of the way. He's got a lot of manoeuvring to do and a waste of time. But in the block position, time doesn't matter that much. You can afford to do the manoeuvring, yeah, the slow stuff. You can afford to manoeuvre the knight around to get it on a good square, even if it involves coming backwards to go forwards to get it. Yeah, you've got the time to do it. Yeah. Um, with it being blocked in the centre like this, it's, it's, it's hopeless for the rooks to come get through. And it's just as bad almost if it's in. 
to try and get the bishops through as well. Yeah? So knights tend to have a little bit more uh, opportunity, should we say, to fiddle around and you know, get into good positions. So, D D5 blocks it all up. And uh, I think we'll find in this game that White's plan is to advance on the green side. Okay? I'll play on the green side. Um, with the idea somehow they'll break through, they'll get, perhaps get a pass pawn, push it to the end, and then black a best might have to put a piece for it, but then it should be able to win the ending. Uh, another plan I'm coming up here is that you might well find that all black's pieces go around this way. Yeah, you might, and you've got some heart stopping moments to avoid you. But if you know if you played it okay and you've made, got through quicker around here, you might well find that the rooks go up here and turn right and get round behind the king. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's not all bad news that you're going to get checkmated down here. Uh, it's not at all obvious. You've just got to get up here and turn right pretty quickly, and you can you can often get round. So, how do we how do we do this? Uh, black did play this move, in fact, it blocked now. Now the centre's all blocked, and it's who's going to play on which side. Okay. And uh, white decides to come on this side. He's going to play for b4. Okay. Rook b1. He just moved it, didn't he? Yeah? But he's moved it back now because he initially wants to do this. And he actually wants to get his knight out of the way <laughs> yeah, to be able to do it. And when this pawn does come up here, he's hoping for pawn takes pawn and pawn takes. So he's got a nice load of pawns here. He's not that worried about his king being exposed. But he's, uh, he's, he's just going to get things in. And now here, I think this settles Black's idea now, because putting it to here gives him no squares at all. I mean, this maybe he's going here, or in, as in game he goes here, but, but he, now, he now decides he's going to come back. A lot of manoeuvring here. And now White gets the, his first opportunity to break on the Queen's side. Okay. So, all, all, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, the queen here, starting to get, starting to get in. I, I, I wondered whether, in this position, whether he would have liked to have got this move in, okay? get it, get going. But maybe he was a bit bothered about this. I don't know. I think sort of that was what put him off, because this is an immediate fall here. That's a, a nasty square to lose. So I think if I was to try and explain Black's move, he did this first uh, because then he can do this and he can fiddle around for a bit. Um, but he definitely needs to get F F5 going from first. Okay. Um, that's an interesting move. Yeah. I just wonder whether it was he, he was thinking, well, I don't know when we whether I'm going to shift this across here. Um, but maybe when we do start moving up things like this and he comes and attacks me, I really don't, don't want this bishop pin in the knight and the rook in the corner. I think it's just a safety first move. I don't think it has to be played now, but just did it. Knight here. You know, Black's, Black's manoeuvring around um, in an interesting fashion, I would say, but he still needs to be getting, generating some play on the king's side. He hasn't done it yet. Bishop there. Um, he's, he's waiting till Black Knight can't get to this square because it would just be a bit irritating. Yeah. Now, now the knight can't get here and swap this bishop off. I mean. I mean, White might try a plan like this and this and swap off his, his bishop in there because it's quite a good defensive piece, but, but I think White's just getting his pieces out. And, and White's queen side attack is starting to build here. He's doing all right. Born here. I think he's just to hold this position as well. Um, he doesn't really want to add. I mean, this, this just leaves his pawn. There's too many pieces to here. So, 
Black's just going super solid here in, in terms of trying to hold this something, but he's really got to get his counter play in going over here, but he hasn't decided to do it yet. Okay, Knight here. Starting to get things moving. Now, when I saw this guy, I sort of wondered, I wonder if White isn't sure whether side is going to play on. <laughs> Is he thinking of maybe this up and using the rook across it and going up the king's side? And I think he's keeping his options open a little bit here. Yeah? I'm not quite sure what his, what his plan is. The problem in here, of course, is with all these pawns on white squares and this white square the bishop is always going to be blocked in. Yeah? Great for the king's defence, but you know, how do you get through all this load of white pawns here? And in the same way, these all these black pawns here are blocked in by his bishop over there. Yeah. So that's the problem with it when the centre is sort of super solid. I like you can't really do very much. Okay, nice here. Just came from there, didn't it? A minute ago, unless I'm mistaken. Do you know what? I would probably say at this point, Kluivert is just trying to keep his peace. He, he, He's, he's wary about, about this move, okay? He's not sure he wants to do it, yeah? And he's waiting for his opportunity when it's going to be the right move to play. Because it does weaken some key squares, yeah? And I, I, I just wonder how, how much White can start to, you know, take, take, and maybe even queen that here or something like that. It's all, it's all... It's everyone, they're both playing a cagey game, you yeah? know? They're not trying to give up away what they're doing, uh, I would suggest. Very, very cagey just at the moment. Okay? And look, at this, look at this. Queens can move long distances. So we will move it one square. Subtle. I mean, again, he's, he, 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 you can feel why it's eyeing up. Ooh, maybe I should be attacking up the king's side. He can always do that. He can always choose to block it. At some stage you go up the king's side. Yeah. But I think he's, he's he's trying to keep his options open here. And as we'll see, the game develop. White does in fact have to take up the queen's side. Yeah. Um, knight here. <laughs> just, just playing around with him. Yeah. Um, it's, he's defending, but he doesn't want. Gligrich is defending, but he doesn't want to commit to his pieces too soon. He still thinks he's got a good, flexible position. He's waiting to see what's going on here, yeah, without coming, and it's, and it's a mark of a good defensive player. Yeah? If they're trying to defend, they'll defend actively. In other words, they'll keep their piece, they won't put the pieces onto bad squares. Yeah? I mean, all the pe these pieces here, they, they can leap back into other areas, if, if White overextends himself in some way, maybe they jump out again. Yeah. Best player I ever known to do that was Julian Hodgson. Oh, he used to get himself in difficult positions, but then he put all his pieces on and did squares and wait to see what the other person did. And sooner or later, they had, they'd go, oh, I've got more space, I must be better. And they'd try and do something and then, oh, they get him. <laughs> and they wish they'd never done anything in the first place. But all his pieces defended with a purpose that, you know, if you let me out, I'll, I'll get you. Crouching tiger defence, I think you probably call it. <laughs> right, so here we are. Lurich is, is doing this. Was it a good plan against Rishovsky? Well, in this game, um, what ends up winning, so... You have to question it, but he must have won an awful lot of games just by going so yeah, yeah, come on and get me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then just waiting his opportunity to count counter attack. Okay. Bishop here. Well, there we go. Now, Black chose not to do this. And it looks like a moderately thing, but I think he was very worried about giving away this squad. Okay? I think he still wants to get this move in at some stage. I think it's the only way to get. But um, Black decides he's he wants to do he wants to swap some pieces off in this position. 
And now they've had a little bit of messing around there because he goes here <laughs> and he decides to go back again. So it's okay, take me if you want. I think I might have been prepared to try and keep that black squared bishop on the board, really. Mm. But, yeah, the trouble is if he, if he doesn't do that and he moves this, it makes, makes this move even harder. Yeah? So, only if clear it short, well, once we swap those up, maybe it would just offer me a draw. You know, but uh, that wasn't to be the case. Yeah. That was white play here. Now, as I said before, this bishop wasn't that fantastic with all the pawns and white mm -hmm. spurs. So maybe what he's thinking of doing is probably training this bishop to this bishop when he get the opportunity arrives. Okay? Because with all the pawns on black squares, like this, that's a bit blocked in, but he's, this bishop is looking after some of the white squares, stopping, jumping in there. So between the black square pawns and the white square bishop, he's, he's sort of covering both. Yeah? And um, he see, I think he can take I don't think, uh, there's no tactics that I, I can see in this position. It stops um, at five. So? It stops at five. Well, yeah, now, <laughs> F5's looking at you. He could have played it a few moves ago, couldn't he? Yeah. And now it's almost like you lost your chance, mate. You've almost lost your chance to play F5. Um, yeah, I suppose it holds it completely back. And there are a lot of pieces sort of wanted to. You, there's a piece of, you almost think, do you know what? I'm sort of half tempted to play f4 and swing the rooks and, and go up the king. So it certainly looks at an attractive plan, doesn't it? Yeah. And, uh, you know, he you know, goes here now. Since he can't get f5 in, I presume he's, he's waiting, um, sort of. How, how bad would it be to let him have exchange and play bishop h4? Yeah. And then force things after f5. So what do you think, bishop? When the when the bishop is in f6. Oh yeah, I like take it on take take the knight on h4. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, what? I mean, it, I mean, it might be old football. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Well, I'll be greedy and take that. Yeah. King takes bishop. King takes bishop. Or knight takes bishop. Or knight takes bishop. Okay. Let's, let's have a look at that. And then you might play f5 and you have a little bit of counter game after taking the bishop. Well I think I, well, I think I think I have to take this one, don't I? No, that bishop wasn't there. That no, that wasn't there. That wasn't there, there. Yeah, was yeah. Oh no, I'm sorry. You have to play the pawn takes bishop, don't you? I think so, yeah. Otherwise we'll bring the material down. Pawn for the exchange. Do you know what? I, I feel that gives White a winning a winning plan. Yeah. He's he's he's, a, he's an exchanger. Yeah. I feel we can probably we can probably play Queen here. Uh, I don't think it's gonna, it shouldn't be dangerous around here. Um, I think we probably play uh, get F four in a minute. I think yeah. black okay the black flag exchange if he's got no development and he's yeah. he looks at home still so. Uh, well, well playing effectively with an extra piece. And yeah, if, I didn't do it. If, if one of these knights could get to a really nice square like this, yeah, and, it, and maybe that could have some prospect. Maybe he's got something for it. But it just looks like he's presented white with a, yeah, but if a good take, plan. And if we take him with the king instead of the knight, and then our bishop can go, knight can come to f6, or that too stupid. Let's chase that queen. Can we chase the queen away somehow? Don't know. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want to, once, I, once I've secured the, uh, yeah, my king side from the invasion of all these pieces, I just, I feel it would probably, I think, I'm confident they both would have looked at it, but I think it just gives um, quite a, an, an easy plan. Take the exchange. And then unravel yourself from here. I get. It's not like your rooks aren't going to be active because if you ever get f4 in, thing, the rooks are in. If they were, 
if they were boxed away and couldn't do anything. Yeah? But I think here the, the, the rooks probably become a, um, active very, very quickly. So you're not. Uh, what are the birds at the end in here? Here. Oh. oh, I want one of those down there. There was one down there. Yeah, so I can sort of see why he didn't, he, he didn't commit it. Is it on G7? Yeah, he went here, didn't he? Sorry, let's get this right. Thank you. It was uh, K3, which he won. And now Black decides to take, take them off. Yeah. Is the white bishop on H3? The yeah, white bishop was on H3. Is it on H3 yet? Yeah, yeah. It was on H3. Yeah. 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 It was. Correct. There's a queen on the right square, Ken. Um, yes, yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's the queen. Yeah. Okay. And now. F4. <laughs> F5. Do you know what? Why did he now didn't play? I mean, I, I, after pawn takes, he can't recapture you know, because the knight moves. So he it, 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 it can't quite recapture you, So So, play this one. Really. <laughs> Just trying to, try to hold the position going here. So, not even now, I don't even think the first part is planned of attacking up the queen side. Has got very far, but Black's Black's options of how he's going to play this seem to be reducing now. He never played f5 when he had the opportunity, and he can't do it now. No? Um, uh, I'm not sure who controls the Black squares around here because this queen is every bit as good as that queen, and you know he's got to watch out that his king doesn't get a little bit exposed. No? The White King here is fine. Uh, the Rook seem here, because they've got these two lines to operate in, and they've only got one, uh, you can already see there's a bit more manoeuvrability in White's position. Yeah. Right, so uh, how did he continue from here? It was not here. Yeah. And now White, White as part of his overall plan, believe that he swapped the bishops off. It's all, we've got all the bishops disappeared, so we've got, we've got two knights each and no bishops. <laughs> all the bishops have been traded off. Which rook did he take in? Oh, that's a good point. It was this one he took with. Yeah. Yeah. Been the other one. yeah, I think he, Black's giving up, we're trying to get it far. He just can't see a way in which he's going to stay here. And now, uh, one takes four. Well, again, I don't think there's much option here. I mean, this way loses to d6 anyway, so it's got to take back this way. And now we see that White are then swapping all the bishops off as there's one file, which is so important. The I suppose by playing queen d2, you can drop the queen onto a5 later. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. well, he's keeping an eye on this side in case Black does something crazy. But also from here he can he can drop it on the side. Well. Well. Yeah, exactly. Well, this is it. There's not a lot to think about here. Just get hold of that big farm because it's the only open farm. Rooks design must be on the open farm. Black can't leave white with the open farm at all because you'll just start getting in. So the best Black can do is maybe swap off down that farm. Okay. So let's let's see how the next few moves. Uh, one, two, one. This one first, and this one decided it was coming back again over there. Mm. It's, it's, it's oscill oscillated. Is that bad? If it wasn't such a blocked position, I would say yes, you're losing a lot of time. But because it's a blocked position, you know, it, it's, time isn't as crucial as it would normally be. Yeah. So, uh, um, Knight here. Okay. We're getting ready to a big fight on the B farm here. Uh, the reason I'm hesitating, it's an old money. Oh, I'm not translated. Um, as I'm going along. Okay, King Hunt. No, you're not having that. White's developing quite a lot of pressure down this B farm now. He's starting to make some progress. And you can see why he would, 
you know, rather than go out for a gun coal and say, how is he going to get three pieces out? It's not easy to get three pieces over there, is it? You can't get three pieces over, don't do it. Yeah. The chances of being able to checkmate with one or two, pretty low chance. If you can't get three pieces, it's probably not the right plan. Yeah. So, Queen here. We're still doing some tremendous defending over here. Uh, he's still trying to, yeah, this is just this is just a waiting move as much as anything. He's not doing it. It's just getting onto a perhaps a better square. King here. Pawn there. Again, I'm not sure whether that's a, a sort of waiting move I would want to play or not. I mean, obviously, the keeper is a better player than I'll ever be. But it, every time you move a pawn around in front of the king, you can't move it back, and it creates a weakness. Well, I just don't know whether it was necessary to do this. Yeah. Well, he did it. Queen here, this is the idea you were thinking of, Tony. Yeah? He's starting to get his pieces down the queen's, the queen's side. Um, <laughs> what's this fellow doing over here? He's attacking the queen. If he's playing down the queen's side, he really needs this over here somewhere, I don't know. Something like this. That's going to take a bit of time to get over there. So he leaves it over there and thinks, well, uh, maybe I can do something here. Get something going. Uh, nine to nine three. By the way, this is the main bit of the game, yeah? White's uh, planning a queenside attack, okay? He hasn't come to the switching the attacks bit yet. We've got that to come. He's, he's, he's still pursuing playing up the queenside here. And it's a good plan. You know, he's, 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 you know, a lot of the time the trolls in those days. Oh, good um, Lord. They used to do some, like, 40 moves in two hours. There's a lot of going on here. Yeah, 40, 40 moves, moves, in moves in two hours. There was no such thing as Fisher. <coughs> he hadn't uh, suggested any increments or anything like that. And it would be um, probably 40 moves in two and a half ad infinitum. They would adjourn after five hours. And those of you who remember Germans, somebody would come around with a score sheet. So, no, no, actually, didn't. They would come around with an envelope. And you have to write down on your envelope, then you'd have to put your next move on your score sheet, yeah? put both score sheets in the envelope, give the envelope to the arbiter, and decide, <coughs> well, we're going to have tea now, um, you know, we'll come back at past seven or eight o'clock. <coughs> or they might say, nah, I think not Come back and we'll start again at ten o'clock in the morning. Yeah. And they just carry on like that. I mean, there's one, one famous game, um, um, somebody, one of the Yugoslavs, I'll have to look up which one now, but I mean, against Heidenfeld in the Olympiad in 1960, and they had, they played what, something like, oh, I don't know, so 160 moves, and, and after over three, five, uh, five hour sessions, and at the end of it, um, Heidenfeld cheapo then got a draw. <laughs> 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 I believe the Yugoslav, the Yugoslav he said when he played this move, it's a really clever stalemate idea. And he, it, you know, queen and two pawns against queen. I mean, the two pawns are connected as well. It's an easy win. And the guy just forgot to concentrate completely. It just, he, it, it must be winning now. And he missed it, and then all of a sudden he sacked his point for his time. And I believe the US last week, 15 minutes with his head in his hand, moaning, before he <laughs> made the move. <laughs> so yeah, that would go on for age. Did you see Vicky Adams against Bodor when Adams was two points down? No, I didn't. Well, that was incredible. Well, I'll show you if you want. Okay, when we, when we finish that. Right. So yes, they so, used to go on and on and on. And uh, for those of you who will remember, we used to do this in the local leagues as well. So, you know, you used to you'd adjourn and have to go out and play it, and then you couldn't play in one of your north to start a new match, yeah, because you've got these all the Germans pack, packing up. Uh, uh, and so it, it also, the advent of computers, yeah, you could stick on computers, you'd find all the best moves, and it wasn't you playing it. Yeah, so, yeah, hence the reason trying to get all finished in one set. But where does that leave us now? Pretty much, no. Not 
And yeah, nine takes out this play. Okay, four takes. And Queen back in. <laughs> yeah. So after all that, the Queen's just dropped back, defending here, but leaving this up as a massive weakness. They can also play up four now. Well, that's a, that's a nice cheapo, isn't it, to get that one in? Because if I can take it, take it. So we are, in fact, yeah, White's, White's doing some nice probing here. I mean, true, this is a weakness, and that's a weakness. Yeah. Uh, okay. Which is the greatest weakness of the two? Well, uh, this one, because it's going get, to get, get beaten uh, uh, at the moment. Um, the relative values of the knights, well, uh, I'm hard, it's hard for me to convince you, you know, that this and this look like sensible moves in the near future. But maybe it's a bit more threatening than this. It, this almost has no roots to be in a good piece. Maybe, maybe you have to do something like this or something. But then, what's it do when it gets there? Oh, I don't know. But yeah, this is the medium threat, isn't it? Yeah. Um, which, which we had here. And now, um, to, to stop that immediate threat, he plays here. Yeah. Now, I can't tell you whether he either plays in the sort of time trial here. Um, the times aren't recorded, it, it may be, maybe not. But now White finds a, a quite a nice move. Which one like, takes B6? Yeah. Well, he's got, he's, he, he might have a little bit of a problem here. Rook takes B6, Rook takes B6, Rook takes B6. What about Knight D5? That's a sneaky, nasty move. Oh, wow. Whoa! <laughs> Yeah, that's a sneaky yeah, answer. Yeah. So Black's still defending with a bit of cunning. Yeah? So, a bit of cunning. We, you have to be a bit, you still got to be a bit careful here. Yeah. In terms of that. Okay? And now, um, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember, I think it's Nigel Pover. It used to go on about the power of creeping queen moves. Big, huge moves where queens dash here and dash here. So you always see them. Yeah? What you miss is the odd little move, like where the queen just moves one square. And it changes the complete position completely. Yeah? Yeah, it's easy to see the big queen moves, but the subtle little queen moves just one square to the side can be quite devastating. And of course, now he's picking off this one here. And now, if he does pick off that pawn over there, all of a sudden I'm starting to think, well, just a minute, I've got a queen over there, I've got a knight. All I need is to get one of those rooks in, and we might be having some fun around the king. And I think after this move, White decides on his plan of switching the attack. Sorry. F4 again, let's go over here. I'm not going to go up that side of that board. Yeah? I'm going to go over there to get, to get his king. Because if I can get the knight, the knight's already well placed, fortuitously. Okay? The queen's heading in that direction as well. And with f4 and the rooks across, we've got a pretty powerful army heading there. Can he get his pieces over to defend that quickly? The rooks shuffling across. Not going to be quite so easy. Not quite so easy. It's going to be... And, and, and even this knight, just to get in the way of everything. So, so White's plan now was switch the attack. He, he, to me, it looked like he was making pretty good progress up here. Unfortunately, the rook takes more and walks into a yeah, cheap hope, so he doesn't do that. And Gligorich now has a, a bit of an unenviable position now because I've got a feeling that if you, if you, King G7. if you play here, now you can take this up. I think you can snaffle it now. Right. He well, takes it back. Takes, takes, takes. That takes one, yeah, yeah. Right, takes one. Queen takes. Uh, and you're on the rock, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's subtly different now, isn't it? And I've got a piece. So he plays rook, takes the queen first. Uh, well, yeah, he has, to, he has to throw something like that in, doesn't he? So I think you might be threatening to snaffle it now. So when the queen comes here, Gligorich has got a bit of one, and then you, he, he's going to, is he going to lose this one, or is he going to lose that one? Hard decision. No. Which one would you 
people. If you cut out the people, it's permanent weakness. Is that, that's that's going to die anyway. So you yeah. So you'd rather you'd rather keep your king safe. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're prob- Do you know what? That's a pro- probably a practical decision. What he does do, I can't fault him for that. He goes to counter plan. Yeah. He says, okay, I'm going to let you have that pawn, but I'm going to go for counter plan on this side just to see if it. And I think his judgment. He comes up short on the counter play. Yeah. It, but not by a lot. Yeah. But at least. He's probably been under, felt he's been under the cosh for so long. He just does. He just wants to at least get, play some of his own moves in, instead of reacting. So he decides, rightly or wrongly, that he's going to go for the counter play. Nine takes four. Oh, sorry, takes four. Queen turns. I wonder whether sometimes you think this is my. This might be my last chance to wriggle out of this. Yeah? And maybe, maybe, if this just does hold over here, I might be alright. But can I hold it? Yeah? Maybe, maybe moves like Queen here instead of um, Queen here, you might be feeling his hopes on. I don't know. Yeah. But the rook on a3 can never really be a threat because you've got the joined rooks on the b files. So yeah. Just bung one in front of it. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe he's hoping to do moves like this, yeah? Or maybe I'm mean, making use of himself in this pawn. Yeah, I think that's probably what he's... He's trying to get something going. He's probably lost patience with being in a dull position. And now he's still getting dizzy as well. Well, yes, yeah, so I think he's gone backwards and forwards. Like, it's been no tomorrow. Right, no time. Um, I, I have to say, it's coming round again, by the way. <laughs> Birkin comes around, um, but now the big pawn is defended. So we've had a swap off of this pawn for this pawn. Yeah, I think I'd rather have the pawn red. Uh, earlier, when I said I wasn't sure why he moved the pawn up, uh, it just created a, a, a weakness which he didn't have to do. And uh, ooh, oh, he's got an extra pawn over here. But I think that's what he's hoping for. Right. And now, now, he does decide to do this. Hurrah! That's, he's now going to play this. Okay. However, it only helps White's plan, really. I mean, he's got a great, I mean, this, this is nasty to me, actually, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's going to be very nasty to me. Uh, he's going to be smashing up these things on the king side. Okay. Um, so he decides, let's see if we can expose the uh, white king somehow. Okay. Mm. The, the storm count the plants are sort of gathering now. Yeah. Because he can sack the. What? Yeah, because he can skip it and he sacks the. So if he if he takes takes here yeah he just oh actually no you could no what do you yeah, say you could you could sack the knight like a like avoided it's why can't you avoid it knight d six sorry knight d six knight g six um pawn takes well it's like what you have made Michael then I'll give you an F eight I'll give you checkmate what about if we do we can't do do that at the moment what about then. Can I wriggle out here? This, this is mate as well, isn't it? That's, a, that's unfortunate. <laughs> Not good, is it? I still wouldn't play a four and move five by myself. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is, wasn't a continuation of the play, but <laughs> it's good, it looks good. It looks good to me. It looks really good. Do you know what I saw? Isn't it funny, you know, we learned that. I would have played that. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I thought that looked pretty fun as well. Um, did he play FTX? Can you play Queen A4? Oh, just a minute, I don't think I've the right position. Can, can you play Queen A4 then? Oh, in this position? No, I'll talk to so. Yeah, good point to that position. Queen A4? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, probably, but would it would it help? 
Queen. Yeah, Queen Yeah, yeah, right. Not the best, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's the point. You've now got your three edge tapping pieces, so it should be uh, it should be pretty uh, pretty strong. Queen here, 